Eve with the ITV News. Good evening, I'm Romilly Weeks. American forces have killed a number of Iranian-backed militants as they attempted to storm a container ship in the Red Sea. A US-led task force, which includes ships from the Royal Navy, has been protecting commercial shipping in the area after a string of attacks by Yemen's Houthi rebels. This latest escalation comes amid heightened tensions in the region over the situation in Gaza. Amy Lewis has this report. Vessels along one of the world's busiest shipping lanes have been under attack now for more than a month. Yemen's Houthi rebels have previously warned they are targeting ships in the Red Sea in response to the war in Gaza. US warships, part of a global naval task force, were already poised to prevent further attacks. In the early hours when Houthi rebels got within meters of boarding this ship, they responded to a distress call. And after being fired upon, they sank three boats, killing the crews. A fourth boat escaped. The Iranian-backed rebel group claims its attacks are directed at vessels linked to Israel. America says the ship is registered to Singapore and owned and operated by a Danish firm. In a statement, UK Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron said he has told Iran's foreign minister that Tehran shares responsibility for preventing these attacks, given their long-standing support to the Houthis. The rebels say their attacks in the Red Sea will continue until this ends in Gaza. The health ministry say more than 21,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israel's offensive which began after Hamas's attack 12 weeks ago. It has left thousands facing starvation, but Israel says it is now ready to let ships bring aid to Gaza's shores immediately as part of a proposed sea corridor from Cyprus. But the year ends with fears not just about Gaza, but that tensions in the region are escalating and the conflict could spread. Amy Lewis, ITV News. Dominic Cummings has claimed the Prime Minister sought a secret deal with him to try and win next year's election. Number 10 have not denied that talks with Boris Johnson's former adviser did take place, but say no job was ever offered. And our political reporter Jasmine Cameron Chileshi joins me now. Jasmine, so what do the opposition parties have to say about all of this? So Labour arguing it, that this is a sign that Rishi Sunak has run out of ideas and the Lib Dems are calling for an inquiry to see whether the ministerial code has been breached. Now, a government spokesperson has pushed back on this, arguing that the nature of these meetings meant that they didn't necessarily mean to be declared. But I think all of this is pretty awkward for the Prime Minister. He's put a lot of energy in distancing himself from previous administrations, for example, rowing back on net zero commitments, uh, scrapping of HS2. And during the Tory leadership contest, he even said that Dominic Cummings wouldn't form part of his team. But time and time again, the PM has had to navigate scandals linked to his predecessors. And just yesterday, there was that big backlash over uh, Liz Truss's resignation honours list. And I think as we head into an election year, the PM and his team will be thinking really carefully about how they pitch a, a fresh vision to the voters, all the while presiding over a party that's got more than a decade's worth of political baggage. Right, Jasmine, thank you. The award-winning journalist and documentary maker John Pilger has died at the age of 84. His reports first drew global attention to the Cambodian genocide. And throughout his career, he shone a light on human rights issues around the world. Jay Akbar looks back at his life. This is bomb damage in Gaza. And this is the front line less than 50 miles from the capital, Phnom Penh. For 50 years, he brought the front line to front rooms. So much so, this slate became a mainstay in John Pilger's reports. He made his name reporting on conflicts covering the Cambodian genocide and more recently from Gaza and the West Bank. Almost a million Palestinians are trapped behind electrified barbed wire and roadblocks. The aim was to silence and criminalize WikiLeaks. Throughout his career, Pilger waged his own personal war against what he saw as injustice. John was a truth teller. He wanted to tell truth to power um, in a way that many journalists didn't. Pilger exposed abuses against the indigenous in his native Australia. 
Australia is a secret country with a secret history. While his work on the thalidomide scandal helped secure settlement for affected families, this he saw as a duty. Being allowed to go into people's lives, uh, being able to go and find out what the hell is going on, is a huge privilege. Pilger's many awards included a BAFTA and Emmy. His work, though, seemed to transcend awards and eras. John Pilger, who's died age 84. To sport now, and there's to be no happy new year for Arsenal, it seems. The title contenders suffered their second straight defeat over the festive period, losing at Fulham, and Chris Scudder was watching. Arsenal have been here before. Twelve months ago, they took a seven-point lead into the new year, but it unravelled painfully from there. They knew a win here would take them back to the top. It started well. But Saka is there to turn in an early advantage. But if that was welcomed, it was thumbs down from the boss when Fulham equalised. Raul Jimenez, the scorer, who fractured his skull playing for Wolves against Arsenal three years ago. And then for the second time over the festive period, a hammer blow to their title ambitions. Decon overreads! A tearful end to 2023 for the Gunners, whose shooting in front of goal spluttered miserably. Oh, what a chance! It all ended in a deluge of disappointment. Sometimes it really does never rain. It pours. Chris Scudder, ITV News. As the UK prepares to ring in the new year, some countries around the world have already welcomed 2024. Australia was one of the first, marking the new year with a 12-minute long fireworks show from the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The display was watched by more than a million people from boats and along the promenade. China followed shortly after, bringing in the year with a countdown and display at Shugang Park in Beijing. And in the last hour, Thailand celebrated by setting off around 50,000 fireworks over the Chao Phraya River in Bangkok. And I will be back at 20 to midnight with a build-up to the fireworks celebrations here in London and Edinburgh, as well as all the latest headlines. Join me then. For now, goodbye.